Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. Well, want to see an amazing Cadillac? The most opulent collection of American cars in the country? And an original owner of an Australian classic? Well, stick around on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Well, today it's about a three hour cruise for me in my 72 Cadillac, catching up with the Cadillac Society of Sydney. It's off to Newcastle, New South Wales, where you're going to see an amazing collection parked up for the last time as we know it. Then, later in today's show, a lovely guy, a tribute to him as the original owner of an XW GT Falcon. But now, it's time for Glenn. This guy here's got a few cars. The man of the moment, Glenn Jennings. How are you, buddy? Fletchy, I'm very well, mate. Thanks for coming back for your third, fourth, fifth or sixth visit. I gave up counting. Yeah, me too. It's nice. That's nice because it means that I've been here a lot. And I know that there's uh, some reasons for why this is closing. Uh, it's sad in a lot of ways, but I know there's positives for you as well. Might I just cut to the chase and, uh, I guess, understand the amount of pressure there is in maintaining over 100 cars to this to this condition. I think everyone that owns a collector car understands that they all have their own personalities. They have their own little quirky things that go right and wrong with them. Put that on a scale of 100 and uh, just the sheer size of the building and the costs attached to it, the time attached to it. I think the driving factor for me was that uh, I'm at a time of my life with family and grandkids now where it would be nice not to be tied uh, uh, to have to come back to the museum to go for a holiday and not worry about being back for certain dates. Yeah. So, and I also think too, Fletch, that as a car collector, and I'll always be in the car hobby, uh, the cars need to be out on the road um, and in the next generation of, of carers. Uh, so a great opportunity for people to buy some of the most beautiful American iconic cars at an auction in Australia that we won't ever see again. So it's, a, it's just a, I think it's going to be a fun time with a tinge of sadness. You've had a few show days in the lead up. The auction is still a couple of months from now, right? It is. The cars go up on uh, Saturday the 20th and Sunday the 21st of October, which means we've got three more open days scheduled. Uh, all of which are looking like today going to be um, pretty busy. And I think that's people are starting to realise that it, it, you've got to get in because it's going to be gone. And the memorabilia auctions will follow uh, in accordance after the cars go. And I'd like to add too that those dates, of course, are in the year of 2018 because I know that in a lot of years from now, people are going to, well, you're still going to be watching this episode. Yes. Glenn, the personal side of, of what you have done to the fraternity, it's easy to say that this uh, is the largest American car collection uh, of this quality in Australia. Um, it's been done by yourself, um, an incredible, incredible accolade to you. But the joy that you have brought thousands and thousands of people and it's not until we have or you have an open day like this where you realize that look it's very true i i like anybody you, you tend to get a bit blase and take things for granted and, and i'm no different I, I i appreciate the cars and the museum but you're right today days like today when folks come in and you can just feel the atmosphere and the, and the smiles and the amount of people that have come up today and said congratulations we're sad it's closing but thank you it's nice they're acknowledging and, and thanking us for doing what we've done but I have to say too mate selfishly I bought these cars because I love them I bought the memorabilia because I love the chase I love the, the getting down and dirty and and uh, digging through and getting them this is just a bonus for me the, the accolades I get from people Glenn we're sitting at over a hundred vehicles here I do believe that you're going to be keeping a handful um, do you wish not to reveal the three or four that you're going to hang on to? No, no I'm happy to because I get asked that all the time. Uh, there's still a couple here on the floor that will go home. Uh, the others are already at home. So what I've chosen to do is there's a couple that are sentimentally favourites but I, I opted to go with a, a bit of a variety. So my 63 Corvette split window will stay. 
directly behind me the Chrysler Imperial, the 61 Imperial, the 58 Pontiac Bonneville Coupe that you and I both stand and drool over. That's a shame. I was going to talk to Glenn about a, a payment plan to <laughs> pay off the deposit. <laughs> yeah, it might be a nice deposit on that yeah. one, Fletchie. Yeah. But also, in addition to that, I've decided to keep the 63 Chevy Corvair Greenbrier, which is that little surf buggy wagon, so I can put the grandkids in the back and go to the beach and not be too worried. That's beautiful. It it's really a is. Thing. Yeah. And we've already got that at home. And we've already got the kids' seats in it. So we're good to go. Um, and, of course, my... 1940 Cadillac Fleetwood limousine that my daughters have all been married in, which is a that's when I said the sentimental favourite. So that's it. That's my five cars that I'm going to hang on to, and uh, I'm excited with that. If one thing I had to say to the public was I can't thank them enough for giving back what they do, but I can't. I just can't uh, express enough the fun time that it's been, and and what a wonderful ride it's been, and the people I met, and guys like yourself, who without this I would never have met and lifelong mates, regardless of if I have a car or not. So there's friendships that have been struck and experiences with my, my family's grown up on this, and now I've got the next generation with Will and Hope coming through, the grandkids. The son-in-laws all work here. So it's given me a lot, mate. It's given me a lot, and I hope I've given a little bit back to the car fraternity. Uh, one thing I, I really hope is that I've inspired people when they come here to join the car club, because you don't know what I'm like. It's Big deal for me, the legacy, more bums on seats. You've inspired thousands of people to buy extra polish. Well, I hope so, because it all keeps our industry bubbling along. And if we don't support it, and we don't put bums on seats, and we don't bring new people and the next generation into these cars, yeah. they'll disappear. Glenn, as it stands, this is the last time that I'll be interviewing Glenn Jennings, as we know him, here in Lost in the 50s Museum. Uh, I'm... It's a very proud accolade as well. Classic Restos holds the record for the amount of times an episode has been Indeed shot in here. It does. So that's uh, that's one thing, mate, that, that we have. It is indeed. And, uh, I mean, Classic Restos, for me, in Australia, there's no one else gets near it. The quality of the shows, not, not the fact that you're a mate of mine, but how you present them. You are one of us. That's important. There are... There are others that uh, that come in with reporters that aren't necessarily car people, and you know that, but you're one of us, so it's in your heart like mine, and we have both a vested interest in keeping our hobby successful and growing, and hence the reason why Fletch Tours and the spin-offs from your business do so well. Of course, that's something you and I'll talk about, because I would love to come and do a couple of those tours with you when I've got the time. We will see what happens in 2019, Glenn. a wonderful year, mate, and, and can I just say thanks to you and Classic Restos for putting the time in. I know it's a long way to travel. Um, but it means a lot to me as a mate, and I appreciate everything you've done for me and my family here at the museum. You're a good man. It's my pleasure, Glenn. Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. All the best. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. It's Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools. 
sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Okay, with me now we have Glenn from the Cadillac Society of Sydney. Glenn, welcome to today's show. Thanks, Fletch. We're out here, outside Lost in the 50s, on the street. Uh, there is absolutely no room in there. Had no idea it was going to be so big. What's your thoughts on that, Glenn? Yeah, it's crazy. I thought it wouldn't be that many people, but it's obviously very popular. So I'm dying to get in there myself and check it out. <laughs> uh, so much for Fletch having a day off. Yeah. So, well, at least you're, it's sunny and, you know, there's cars to look at, so it can't be that bad. Glenn, I have to interview you with this incredible Cadillac Eldorado. What a machine. Have a look at this. What is the colour before we go any further? Uh, it's called Iridescent Glen Eagles Green. Yep. And um, the it has, obviously you can see the white vinyl roof it has, and it has a... Um, metallic uh, green interior there's a lot of there's a lot of green going on here there is. <laughs> it's got a beautiful interior but before we start talking about the upholstery in the seats an era where they used to chrome plate dashboards yes there is there are, there's a lot of chrome on the dashboard it's a uh, can be very fiddly to polish yeah. what other country though with all due respects made automobiles such as this have a look at it it's just so incredible in every way. It's windswept. We look at the back. Uh, pretty well, I would imagine, the start of the tail fin. Glenn, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you, yeah, well, well, it was prior to that. I think the tail fin first emerged on Cadillacs in 1948. Um, but it took it more of a, you know, a fin shape yeah. um, in 57. They became very sharp, didn't they? They did, yeah. So in 57, they became very sharp. Prior to that, they were sort of more rounded and... Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, and of course in '59 they went to their pinnacle and started to recede after that. But, yeah. but I really love uh, what I love about this model the, the most is the fact that the tail fins are inboard. They're not right on the extremities of the car. Mm. And the only two cars that ever had inboard tail fins were this and its um, uh, predecessor in '57 yes. Seville. It also depicts uh, an experimental time on the yes. drawing board, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, Cadillac were, you know, shilling out all sorts of money for re research and development, and they've put a lot of things into these cars that, you know, didn't become standard in regular cars for, for decades. So, you know, it, it's got power steering, power windows, electric seats, power antenna, yeah. you know, automatic boot closer, air conditioning, all those sorts of things, you know. Yeah, and when things went wrong, they went back and they did a different drawing. I mean, that's where that saying comes from, back to the drawing board. Yeah, indeed, yeah. I mean, and, and Cadillac, you know, that they, they on, the, on, the, uh, on the top of the line model, for this year, they lost money on every car they sold. So, um, you know, they, they, they weren't afraid to spend money and, and to try and get ahead of the game. They were standard of the world, as, as they called themselves back in the day. Absolutely tremendous, Glenn. We could stand here and talk all day about the car, but before I let you go, just tell us quickly about the Cadillac Society of Sydney. Sure. Um, it was a Facebook group. It was started by a fellow named Mario, and he was... He just had... Um, you know, he's got a 64 Cadillac, and he wanted to get some people together so he could go on cruises and... That's how it kicked off. I'm not sure how long it's been around for, but I've only been a member for, for about a year and a bit. And, um, you know, we get together as often as we can and go different places and just enjoy each other's company and the cars. It's, it's a lot of fun. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Good on you, Glenn. Thank you very much. Thanks, Fletch. Glenn, have you seen the business card that I give to people that I don't like? I have not. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> on a property northwest of Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, resides a lovely gentleman who is the owner of a very precious XW GT Falcon. This is a guy later in life and we're about to see what his classic car and what his passion means to him. Meet Russell Langlands, devoted husband to Vivian, a dedicated father of four, and is dearly loved by his 13 grandchildren. Russell was born 30th of September 1940 at Riverstone, New South Wales. Russell unfortunately lost his father when he was barely two years of age, and although they were more simple times back then, Russell's mother battled through and did the best she could at the time. Because of his father's passing, Russell spent his early years growing up and living on his grandparents' farm property at Annengrove. Of course, there are endless stories there from Russell, from catching tadpoles to using the outside toilet where the eldest in the family went first and the youngest went last. 
The years went by and Russell's mum could finally afford their home at Castle Street in Castle Hill, New South Wales. Russell has a kind nature and is loved by all that know him. Life these days for Russell is quieter and he takes it easy, although his social life is very good. His life now with wife Vivian is a little different from the years in the fast lane when he enjoyed the wide open throttle of his 351 GT Falcon, a road car that has left a stamp in Australian automotive tradition, a time when the 351 was king. My first memory of a motor car was out at Angrove. Um, I was about seven year old um, and uh, my grandfather used to take me in an old 37 Chev in the Castle Hill Picture Theatre once a fortnight and we thought that was just it. And if I didn't like the movie, I would walk out and go to sleep in the back of the car um, and then we'd come home again. Oh look, we had plenty of fun, but it was pretty hard for our family because I never had a dad um, and um, um, we come to live with our grandfather um, at uh, Adam Grove when our dad died. Um, we, were, we were there till I was about eight or nine year old and mum, then my mum bought a place in Castle Hill and we are all there till, till we all got married. I first drove trucks when I was about 17 year old. My brother put me onto, a, onto a, um, and an old F600 tipper um, and I thought I was just having a brand new truck and uh, driving that truck um, barefoot no shoes, no, no top on. Um, we used to sit in those trucks for 12 hours a day, um, driving those trucks backwards and forwards from the quarry or the pits. The years went by and my brother bought a 67 um, Falcon GT, one of the first ones, and I loved it. He let me drive it every now and again in 1970. Um, I bought my brand new Falcon GT, I was king of the road. I felt like um, it was the same feeling as when I got the car, as when I got, my brother bought me the, uh, my first truck to drive. Some of the trips we have done in the Falcon, um, we drove up to Queensland a couple of times um, we've driven down to Melbourne a couple of times um, and my two brothers live at Walker and Young. We've been down there a few times. Um, just recently we've been down we're there with my two, um, my two sons um, and uh, we went down to, to, see, to see my two brothers on their farms. It's something different because I can't drive anymore now um, and, and my grandchildren come become first um, apart from my wife um, and my four children. My grandchildren are everything to me these days because I see them um, a lot. We've got them ranged from 24 down to one year old um, and I enjoyed every one of them. I've never thought about my car in particular and less until the last 10 years or so um, because I, I didn't realise that they were going to be collect, a collector's item. Um, and I, I, um, uh, I feel very honoured to have a, a car like that. Um, but those days, my wife used to, used to drive it to work every day. We had the kids in a um, in a um, 
in a football team and we used to have the whole team in that car. It was, it was a, eight or nine of them and we used to have them lying up against the dash. There were three or four sitting, sitting, you know, sitting in the front seat and then the back seat, there was probably six across the, the and they were even lining up, um, they were even lining up um, on the back of the um, black windscreen. Yeah, and that was good days. It was real good days. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems. Finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Fern Tree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hair and Forbes has the range. So Russell, how does it feel all these years down the track and you're the owner of this incredible XWGT? Well, um, I, I haven't thought, of, thought about that so much because we always use it as a family car um, and we've, we've had some wonderful trips in it. I know it's a beautiful car and uh, I respect it, and I always have, as you can tell by the condition it's in. When you enjoy something, you look after it. I suppose it's the same as your wife. If you love her, you, you look after her. Well, Russell, you've got yourself comfortable. You've parked your bum on the front of the car, and that's OK. Russell's allowed to park his bum on this car because it's his, right? That's right. You wouldn't have anyone else's bum on it, would you, Russ? No, no. Um, you, you wouldn't want to sit on the on a new car these days because you'd be redundant in it. You would. You'd fall through it, wouldn't you, Russell? You sure would. What a proud fellow we have here. Now, 1970 XW Falcon, we've got a 351 Cleveland. We've got a top loader, we've got a, a nine inch rear, we've got uh, the hamburger with the lot here, an incredible car. Now when you first drove it, those early days, and you'd put your foot down, and you'd go through the gears, compared to other cars on the road, you were pretty well king of the street. What was the feeling like when you first experienced that? Well there was nothing like it. Um, when I put my foot down, I couldn't believe the power that it had yeah. um, in first, second, third, here. Yep. Um, the thing is with it, Fletch, um, it, it, you can put it in a top gear and it'll keep going up hills. Yeah. You don't have to turn your back again. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's what's called torque. That's right. Does it still give you joy to sit in the car as a passenger? Oh, absolutely. 
I'm happy to sit in the back seat. At least I can look out and watch everybody looking at the car going past. On this week's episode, I want to give a personal thanks to motorsport legend Fred Gibson. Now, Fred is a good man. I rang Fred about two hours ago. This is a Saturday afternoon. Left a message on his mobile phone, told him about Russell, and Fred called Russell back, and he got on the phone and he had a chat to you. Now, what was it like talking to Fred Gibson? Oh, unbelievable, because I used to watch him on the, at Bathurst um, races every year, um, and I loved any of those guys that that could really drive those Falcons, yeah. and he was one of them. He's a lovely guy, Fred yeah. Gibson. I, I can I can understand that um, because he spoke so well to me on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope that that all attributed to help make this a very special day for you, Russell. Yes, it has. It has. And thank you very much, Fletch. You're welcome. I appreciate it. All right. Fred Gibson. Hello, Hello. Fred Gibson. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I've been better, mate, but uh, I'm here with Fletch at the moment and uh, uh, we're having a nice day. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this week's extra special episode of Classic Restos. We have seen a sensational Cadillac, a little bit of the amazing Lost in the 50s Museum, and of course the beautiful story of Russell Langlands and his beloved XW GT Falcon. As I say at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, no matter where you're watching the show from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists and Martin's Panel Masters.